So we have two problems. How many bit strings of length 38 have exactly 17 ones? And problem number two, how many subsets of size 17 in a set of size 38? And the answer to both of these problems is C3817. And you know I'd really rather say this as 38 choose 17. Okay, what is the equivalence that's going on here? And that is that there's a natural way to view a subset as a bit string. So if I have some ground set, say it consists of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements in my ground set. If I talk about a subset, here's some subset, B, C, F. That's clearly a subset of my ground set. But I want to see this subset as a bit string, one that emphasizes the connection, the natural connection between a set and a bit string. And so what I do is I associate with this S a string, which tells me whether or not the elements in my ground set belong to this subset. So does A belong? Answer, no. Does B belong? Answer, yes. Does C belong? Answer, yes. D, no. E, no. F, yes. G, no. H, no. So this subset and this bit string obviously in a very natural way correspond to each other. Is it clear to you that this defines a one-to-one -one correspondence between subsets and bit strings? It's so very, very basic. Bit strings, subsets. Subsets, bit strings. Going back and forth. Natural connection between the two. All right, some basic identities for our friends, the binomial coefficients. N choose K is exactly the same thing as N choose N minus K. Why is that? Here's a natural way to explain that. Imagine N people lined up, and you're going to choose k of them. So you identify the k that you want, and you say, OK, you guys take one step forward. Couldn't you just as well have identified the others and say, you take one step backwards? Choosing the ends is the same as choosing the outs. If you only have two choices, you're, if you're not zero, you're one. If you're not one, you're zero. So n choose k is the same thing as n choose n minus k. And by the way, I didn't write it down here, but it's implicit in a statement like this that I mean that the value of k is somewhere between zero and n. So you, there, we, we've written these little programs like what is factorial of n. And what happens if you feed that program minus 3 as the input? It will do bad things. So in fact, decent programs have some error stuff. They have some extra lines in them. So that if you feed them variables, values of the variables, which are outside of the intended range, they, will, uh, they won't do infinite loops. Instead, they will report Data error. Fix your data, you idiot. It, OK, they'll say something like that. And then the program will halt. And then you will go nuts trying to decipher all this code, trying to find out where is the error. OK, 
But your first identity for binomial coefficients is n choose k is n minus n choose n minus k. The second basic multiplication I have now with a heading, eliminating multiplication, but it says that binomial coefficients satisfy this basic relationship. I've got n choose k on the right, and on the left I have n minus 1 choose k, and n minus 1 choose k minus 1. Again, implicit in the statement is that all of these terms are satisfied and that you're talking about binomial coefficients where the bottom part of it is greater or equal to zero and less than or equal to the top part. But what is the explanation for that second identity? So now I want you to think with me that I have a bit string of length n. So I have n positions. And even though I've said to you, beware the dot, dot, dots, if you are explicit about what you mean, then they're OK. And I mean here, I have n positions associated with the first n positive integers. Now, now the, any possible confusion about the dot, dot, dots has been taken care of. So I'm envisioning a bit string up here. And altogether, I have n positions. Now, if I'm talking about n choose k, what am I talking about? A bit string in which there are exactly k ones. Exactly k ones. So what I would like you to do with me is concentrate on this position right here. This position could be a one, or it could be a zero. That's two different groups of bit strings, those which have a 1 and those which have a 0. So if they have a 0, if this string is a 0 and there are k 1s altogether, what is this? It's a bit string, but only of length n minus 1. And what do you see up here? You see k ones. And how many ways can you do that? That's the term on the left. That's the n minus 1 choose k. And vice versa, if this bit is a 1, then what do you see over here? You see a bit string, again, of length only n minus 1. But if there are k ones all together, and there's one of them sitting there, how many are in here? k minus 1. And so that's the second term. That's the n minus 1 choose k minus 1. So there is a basic identity for binomial coefficients. Now once you have that, here's something you can do with it. You can form a triangular array, which is known as Pascal's triangle. And just look at the triangle. Most of you have seen this before, I, I would bet. But if you haven't, then look at it again. Just look at this array. Now, on your notes, fill in the next row at the bottom. Just pause and fill in the next row. If, if you can all do this, then you at least understand what the construction is.
All right, let's, if you've got it done, that's good, but let's do it together out loud. The first entry will be one. The next one, eight. Twenty-eight. Somebody said forty-two. No, no, no. I don't sound like you got twenty. Fifty-six. Seventy. Uh, stop right there. Just write, write them down backwards. N choose K is the same as N choose N minus K. Once you get to the middle, just write them down backwards. All right, so what is 8 choose 3? Just listen to what you said. What is 8 choose 3? Fifty-six. Fifty-six. Now, I got the fifty-six just by listening to what we said together. One, eight, twenty-eight, fifty-six. Now, let's check it another way. Let's check it at eight choose three is eight factorial over 3 factorial, 5 factorial. Now, I don't want to do all that work because this cancels with this. So this is just 8 times 7 times 6 over 1 times 2 times 3. But that's 56. Yay! Okay, so at least we, we did it correctly. So what is the point? To calculate binomial coefficients, you don't have to do any division. And you don't have to do any multiplication. Addition works fine. Addition is all that you need to do. Curious question, if for some bizarre reason you really, really, really were forced to calculate this, and you're not going to do that by hand, right? And let's suppose, though, that all you have is access not to one of the fancy programs like Maple or Mathematica, but you can write your own little code. What do you think would be faster? Doing the addition or doing the multiplication and the division? Are you so sure? Are you so sure? Computers are clever, and computer programmers are clever, and they find ways to do multiplication faster than you think. I'll just make that as an aside and be something you can think about. 